Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, we've got somebody who's got a tremendous amount of background and skill sets in various areas. I just feel like we're going to be smarter and better after we talk to our guests. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, very excited to talk to Joe Evangelisti. He is the host of the Legacy Blueprint, uh, co-founder and or principal of four companies, digital media, e-learning, self-storage development, and real estate investing. He's currently the president of Mammoth Conversions a, and principal in Legacy Developers, HeroPropertyBuyers.com, and the Syndicate Mastermind. I don't know how this guy has time to do anything. Can't believe he's on the podcast. Um, he does specialize in mostly self-storage development along the East Coast. Also a decorated veteran who served in the U.S. Navy Construction Battalion, the CB, the CBs. Um, so, Joe, thank you for your service. So having built an eight-figure empire himself, Joe understands what it takes to master the game of business with over 5,000 hours of coaching experience. Joe's one of the world's most sought after coaches. He's helped hundreds of entrepreneurs and business owners to cross the seven, eight, and nine figure mark. Joe Evangelisti, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. That's for me on the show. Yeah, my, my pleasure. So let's just rewind the tape. And how did you get to where you are today? Yeah. Um, you know, quick story or, or long story short. Um, I did uh, six years in the military, as you were as you were saying earlier. I did about six years uh, with the U.S. Navy CBs, which is uh, really construction battalions in the military, right? These guys uh, go everywhere by by air and um, do everything on land mostly. And um, so I had an amazing career with the, with the U.S. Navy CBs. And uh, you know, not not long after that, I uh, got out of the Navy and uh, ended up back in New Jersey doing general contracting for my dad. You know, working with the family again. Um, wife kind of kind of brought me back to the area. I met my my wife and. Uh, you know, we said she had a short umbilical cord and it was never cut. And uh, so she had to be close to her family. So uh, we ended up back in Jersey at a pretty quick pace. And, um, you know, right away I got the bug. I had a construction background and I knew I wanted to build wealth. I knew I wanted to build, uh, you know, long term uh, legacy of some sort. And, I, and, and you know, I turned to real estate pretty quick out the gate. Um, but, you know, that was uh, 2007. And so uh, arguably maybe like the worst time ever to get into real estate. I'm sure there's probably some uh, some worst times, but one of the worst. Right. And, um, you know, I made immediately got into fixing flipping like I knew construction. So I said, you know, I can flip stuff. I can do, you know, all the work by hand and, you know, why not? And so, um, you know, it taught us a lot of things. Right. It taught us that, you know, we had to pivot. You know, we had to figure out how to stay alive. We had to figure out, uh, you know, um, how to do good business and uh, and, and ride a, a really tough market for the first couple of years. And so a lot of changes happened. A lot of things, um, you know, occurred. And, and, you know, we started to figure out ways to scale, started figuring out private money, started figuring out how to do bigger deals, and, you know, how to find deals and short sales got hot. And, you know, at that time I was, uh, was learning lots of hats, man. Probably, you know, fast forward four or five years, I was doing um, a lot of things in the real estate industry. I was I was a landlord at that point because I had to hold on to the first couple of deals, couldn't sell them, right? Um, I was a broker. I was selling houses because I was trying to make commission on the side, try to you know feed my family. Um, I was flipping houses at that point, and I was also doing uh, what's called a broker's price opinions. I was doing BPOs at a pretty high level. I had a team doing that, and uh, you know, but I was like super stressed out, Mark. Like I was like you know one of those people where I, I kind of felt like I could be an island and uh, I could be everything to everybody. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was making a ton of money, but I never really seemed to have any money. Like cash was coming in as fast as it was going back out the other side. And, you know, um, I was living out of my personal checking account and blending it with my business checking account. I think a lot of people go through that. Um, you know, and I had two little girls at home and I had my wife and I had two dogs and, you know, I was worried about figuring out how I was going to pay my personal bills. And, you know, meanwhile, I had this crazy large tax return. And I was like, dude, I didn't make that. Like if I made that much money, I don't know where it is. You know what I mean? And, so I kept thinking, um, you know, if I push harder, if I push stronger, if I just keep putting more hours in, you know, I'll miss a couple more nights at dinner with the family. I'll miss a couple more family barbecues. I'll miss my niece's birthday party. But you know what? It'll all be good in the long run. 
Um, and that was just the wrong move, man. I almost had like a, a complete meltdown and, and, and I remember the stress piling up and I remember, you know, being just underneath a lot of it and thinking like, you know, I don't know if I can unbury myself from this. If I just push harder. Like I got to figure out a different way. Right. Um, and that's really when I started reaching out to others and, and I hired a coach and I hired a mentor and started figuring out a real plan, um, strategic plan for getting myself out of that. Um, and that was really the precipice for like, you know, um, starting to figure out that piece, starting to level it all out. Um, you know, and, and I figured out what I call today, like my five roads of progress, like things that you have to get done in order to level things out and make it work, right? In order to make that pivot happen so that we can start to, to, to really make things um, automated and create good teams and create good culture and create good business practices. Um, and from there, then things started to grow, right? I started the media company uh, we since transitioned a little bit out of single family. We're doing mostly um, self storage development. Uh, we still have the wholesale business inside the single family, but we don't really do any flips. We don't really buy any uh, additional rental uh, single family rentals. We have the ones that we have, but we're, we're not adding to that portfolio very much. And uh, you know, I, I focus now on elf businesses, right? Easy, lucrative, and fun. Like I try to build, find ways to make you know uh, great passive income or great profit margins with really, really effective teams and, uh, and manage them in, in, in effective time management ways. I, I love it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to ask my fellow elf, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, one of the things I, um, I, I think is pretty interesting is, is one that ever changing, right? You know, like a lot of times people, they have success in something and they get locked on it. So a single family, for example, fix and flip. Joe, Joe didn't get locked on that. In fact, you know, he's looking at the marketplace and as he gets more experience, he's going off and doing other things. And uh, it, the difference though, Mark, is that at least what I picked up out of it is that Joe's not necessarily doing it. Joe's leading, okay, he's he's a team builder. He's got people that are, he, he's building processes. He's building formulas. We talk about processes and formulas all the time. Is he's He's the mastermind behind it, but he's not out there necessarily and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but you're not there like converting these these uh, facilities into self storage units today. You're you're the CEO of the organization, as opposed to the the doer. Um, is that yeah, right? absolutely, Todd. It it took or Scott. It took a long time to figure that out. Um, you know, but but I kept pivoting and I kept making mistakes until I figured it out. That like, hey, you know what? The best investment you can make is in people, right? Finding great people and finding great talent. Um, and you know, I, I used to be that kind of person where I was like. How can I get it done for as cheap as possible with the, with the you know the the person that just fit the bill right that could just get it done, and now my focus is like how can I how can I create seven figure earners how can I create great business partners how can I create other long term wealth for people that that surround how can I create amazing teams, literally I, I journal about this how can I how can I love the people that I work with right not just culturally but like literally like family like you know enjoy uh, the teams that I build and um, you know for me it's a different type of process um, than being the the guy in the trenches swinging the hammer um, you know running around to job sites yeah I think that's one of the the, the great things that uh, or, or the, not great things but one of the more interesting aspects of success that people don't talk a lot about because once you become like you, you're really successful. But you know, I mean, Scott, you know, people like this, they're super successful, but there's just no joy in it. I mean, it's, you know, it is a grind. They're, they're stressed out, they're anxious, they have a scarcity mindset. Um, they may not love the people they're working with, they're hiring, firing, and they're, you know, they're making other people crazy. So to do it, joyfully is another skill set I think that people also have to learn what I what I really liked about your story was that even though you were successful and you had this great tax return you still understood that or had the humility or the self-awareness like hey you know maybe there's another person out there that can help me coach me and you know help me get out of my own way so I can really get to that next level even though you're obviously a very bright guy and if you talk to your friends, like, oh, don't don't invest in a coach. You can figure this out. Yeah, no, it's so true. You know, my friend Judge Graham wrote this book, Scale of Speed. Uh, and inside of it, uh, you just reminded me of something that just makes so much sense inside that book. 
Um, he says one of the killers of, of a good business uh, is is talking in sugar coated BS, right? Like or making up numbers, right? And so, um, not that the tax return was made up numbers, right? But like again, I felt like I never had any cash, but there, but it looked like I had a lot of cash. And like I think a lot of people in our business. Um, especially with social media, I think it made things even worse, right? You know, you'll hear people either, either see, them, see them posting checks and, you know, that's the gross and then they don't really know the net or, you know, they talk about like, what's your average deal? Oh, I'm making 25, 40, 50 grand and they really have no idea. And the reality of it is um, that's, that's like a, it, it's a way to, um, to, to, to inflate your own ego. Uh, but the really, what's the net net? What does it really boil down to? You know, you took home a check for 45 grand. Is your overhead in there? Is your, is your employee, if you have payroll, is it in there? Is your trucks and your gas and your, hey, you know, I mean, I used to have 10 trucks on the road and these things would get dented up and maybe be in the body shop and like, you know, the tires would blow off of them. Like, are you, are you calculating for all of your expenses that go into this business? And when you close a deal for 45 grand, what's your real net net? And I can tell you from experience, I mean, it would take my, my CPA department sometimes three months to give me a true net net on a project. And it would be like 45 would go down to $7,000, right? And so like, you know, not talking in sugar-coated BS, right? Like, let's talk real facts. Let's talk real figures. Let's get real with it. And then share those numbers with your team because they, they deserve to understand if the business is truly profitable or not. And if they're really working towards a common goal, or if, if again, they're just talking in BS, right? I think it's really important right. to bring them along with that same numbers. Yeah, and, and included in that overhead, like I did a, a fix and flip back in the day once because mm -hmm. I made $50,000, but when I factored in my time, I really broke even. I mean, it took you know months and driving back and forth and you know, meeting the, the, the contractors and all the work. I was like, wait a second. I got, when I factor my time on this, totally. this doesn't make any sense. Um, totally. Scott, Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I, think that, um, I think that that's one of the things is you, you've got to, um, you got to get out of your own way, right? You know, and I think that there is a stigma around like hiring a coach sometimes. I think that, that people are afraid to do it one, it's not cheap. Okay. Like hiring a coach is not cheap. It, it's an investment in yourself. Now, you know, one of the questions I, that I love when people ask me is, well, what's the success of someone in X program? Well, success is pretty relative, right? Like it, success to you might be different from me. So you, the success is ultimately up to you just because you have a coach doesn't mean that you're going to be successful. But I think that what it does is it holds you accountable and it drives you back to that formula, right? Go do this stuff. But I, I'd just be kind of curious from Joe, like, Joe, why do you think a lot of people um, are hesitant to spend X dollars on some sort of a coaching program? What, wh why do you think that is? Yeah, you know, I, I think, Scott, I think it's limiting belief is number one. I think that people tell themselves stories or they hear stories. And so what we, what we talk about is, um, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to limiting belief, and that really leads us into the five roads to progress, right? Number one is limiting beliefs. And with limiting beliefs, we tell ourselves stories, right? We convince ourselves of things that may or may not be true. And so what happens is we do what we call rational lies, right? Or we tell ourselves rational lies. So, you know, we, we immediately say to ourselves, well, it's expensive. And then we go, well, is it worth the investment? Well, am I, am I worthy? Am I going to take action? Uh, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not fast enough. Maybe I'm not capable, right? You know, my cousin hired a coach one time and he said it was horrible. He didn't have a good experience, right? And we start telling ourselves and compounding these stories of why it's not going to work. And immediately we, we rationally convince ourselves of why it's not a good investment. So that limiting belief is the same limiting belief that's keeping you from hiring a coach is possibly the same limiting belief that's keeping you from achieving the goals that you've set out to achieve to begin with, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's funny because like, you know, when I go on masterminds, everyone has a coach. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't sure. know one successful person that doesn't have a coach. I have multiple coaches. Absolutely. I belong yeah. to multiple masterminds. I pay multiple coaches. I was literally in, in the other room having lunch with my wife before we hopped on this call talking about hiring another coach. And, and, it, and it, it's not people I think people have to understand. It's not that you have necessarily one coach and they cover all the bases, right? Like you might have a fitness coach that, that you go and meet that holds you accountable to your fitness goals. You might have, uh, you know, a relationship coach that's going to hold you accountable to your 
your goals with your wife or your, or your significant other, right? Um, you know, there's different coaches that specialize in different things. And I think it unlocks a whole different world when you see the results and you're like, wow, when I invest this money in myself and I get the results that I'm looking for, and now all of a sudden it's 10 xing you know, the, the, the growth trend of my goals, right? My goals that I thought were going to take me five years have now been compressed down to 12 months. And now I see the acceleration factor. The, the ROI is exponential, but it's you have to do the work. And I think, Scott, you said that earlier, right? Like at the end of the day, you still have to do the work. Right, right. So let's talk about those five roads to progress. So number one is limiting beliefs. Number one is limiting beliefs. You got to work on limiting beliefs. Uh, number two is lack of a strategic plan. Right. So many people will spend more time planning a vacation, the, the trip to Mexico, than they'll be, than they will planning their life, planning what they what they want to achieve. Right. What are the, if I if you ask somebody what are the top five things you want to achieve personally this year, right? Most people would just, they're just I never even thought about that. It's a great question, right? Um, you know, what do we want to achieve personally? What do you want to achieve in business? And then mapping it out and creating a systematic, um, actionable steps and focusing on outcome related activities instead of task driven activities, right? We're not trying to create a to-do list that never gets done. We're trying to focus on outcome and connect your belief system and your identity to the outcome, not necessarily a task because people aren't motivated by tasks, right? We're motivated by what we're going to become when we, when we create the outcome that we want, right? So lack of a strategic plan is number two. Um, very, very simply, um, if you don't have that strategic plan and you don't have that thing written out, then, then you're not going to achieve it. Uh, number three is time management, poor time management. Uh, the, we call it the rule of 168, right? We all have 168 hours in a week, right? And so right. what makes uh, a Steve Jobs or a Mark Cuban or an Oprah um, control their clock differently than the rest of us, than the people that we look up to, maybe your mentors or maybe people in the space. Um, you know, people, I'm sure Mark, Mark, I was actually just doing an interview last week with a guy um, who's one of your mentees who does land, right? And I said, man, you right. got to know Mark. And he goes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I went to his class, that's why I do what I do, right? What makes you that much better than him at the, that level is you know exactly how to control your clock when it comes to land acquisition, right? Your, your, your high gain activities are dialed in at a higher level because you know exactly the processes and you know how to make it happen, right? Um, and that brings us to, to number three, right? Which is the, uh, I'm sorry, number four, which is systems and support, right? What systems, what processes, um, you know, what what people, what relationships, what things are you not already use, utilizing to 100% of their capacity? Um, how many people are, are sitting around with that fancy CRM and they don't know how to use it, right? So then we chase the next shiny object, right? When, when the reality of it is, if you took 15 minutes to learn how to actually use the program, the chances are it actually does everything you need to do, right? What other teams right. and people around you can help support you? Sometimes it's consultants. Sometimes you don't have to hire uh, full time to make something happen. Sometimes there's resources out there to make things help you level up that you haven't really tapped into yet. So what type of people and systems and support um, are you not getting into? And, and last but not least, number five is uh, our lack of execution, right? We have to execute on these things but then we also have to be able to course correct. And so being able to go out there and take action is one thing, but being able to know how to pivot, like we said before at the beginning, right? You know, I'm at home, I have two little girls, I have a wife, I got two dogs, I got a bills to pay. I got to figure out how to make sure that I can stay alive and thrive and not stress out and have a stroke at 35 years old so that I can continue to scale and support and make the income that I need to fulfill my needs, right? So I got to figure out how to course correct along the way while I'm going down that road to success. And then pin this whole thing together, you got to have accountability. And that's where a coach or a great mentor, you know, come in. Um, having an accountability with a partner or potentially your significant other or your best friend, right? Doesn't always add up, right? If you have your best friend right. as your gym partner and, you know, you're supposed to be there at 5 a.m. at the gym and you text each other, hey, man, it's cold. I think we should sleep in. Yeah, dude, good idea, right? Where's the accountability in that, right? You guys are in alignment to fail together, right? And that's where I think, Todd, when you are talking about earlier with coaching, the investment pays off, right? You're investing in somebody to hold you accountable. They're not your buddy, right? They're not your friend, they're your coach. And their job is to help push you along in the trajectory that you wanna go. And you're making that investment for that reason. 
Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Scott Todd. No, I think that that's that's a key thing. I I think that it's a it's a mindset thing. Um, Mark, we talk we talk a lot about um, you know working with our own coaching students about kind of the lies that they accept as real, right? Like that's one of the things is that we we look at is this whether you want to call it self limiting beliefs or whatever. I think that ultimately it comes down to action, right? Like you you can have the greatest coach in the world and just say I'm not going to the gym this morning. And that's yeah. that's on you. That's on you. But I think if if you put in the the reps, as we like to say, is if you put in the reps, well, then the success will come to you, especially when you have a targeted approach of how you're going to succeed. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Joe, I, I'd love to know what's some of the worst advice you see or hear given in your area of expertise. Huh. There's all kinds of. There's all kinds of fun stuff. Um, I, I think that I think the idea of push button simple or push button made easy has been propagated so much uh, in the last couple of years. It's terrible. Like I think a lot of people say, uh, you know, it's easy to get into a business, it's easy to get into wholesale, right? Um, you know, right. it's easy to get into anything. I, I don't care what it is. And I mean, we have. I'm in the educational space. Um, I have soup to nuts products on getting into wholesale real estate, right? Um, no matter how how push button simple you can make a product, um, you still got to do the work, right? People think it's like, oh, I'm going to get through your, uh, your, your your system and all of a sudden money's just going to start flooding in the front door. Like you still got to go out there and take the action. You still got to take your bruises. The reason that people are successful, the people that you look up to is not because they don't get punched in the face. It's because they're used to getting punched in the face. That's the difference, right? And when you take yeah. that first punch and you go, oh, whoa, this isn't for me. I'm not getting punched in the face, right? Then, then you're not going to see the level of success that those people that you look up to have. They didn't just get there because they walked, you know, some some golden golden road that was comfortable and was easy the whole way. They just got used to being punched. That's the only difference. You got to go out there and take your lumps. No, I, I love it. We we talk about this all the time. Grit, and in having that that burning desire. So when you do get punched, you get back up. Yeah. Nothing's going to keep you down. That's it. Um, yeah. Scott, did you have a, a thought? No, I was just going to say, like, it just makes me think of my my uh, my good buddy, former Navy SEAL, or like I always say, I'm not sure you're ever a former Navy SEAL, but <laughs> you know, the dude told me some crazy stories. I saw him do some crazy things. And I remember one day asking him point blank, why are you so crazy? And he said, when you're a Navy SEAL, you learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's it, That's it right? Man. Like, it, it, however way you want to look at it, if if you just get over the fact of it's it's okay to be uncomfortable, it's amazing what you can do. In fact, I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, "Well, uh, yeah, they were." I was talking about owner financing land, right? Like how right. how they could approach somebody and say, would you owner finance the land? And they're like, well, it doesn't say that. I'm like, it doesn't have to say it, bless them. Yeah. What's the worst they can say? No, how many times have you been told no in your life? I'm still breathing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was saying this the other day, uh, one of our core values is fearless. Like well, our, first, our first core value is fearless, right? And I was saying to my team, a bunch of other teams, actually, I was doing kind of like an open, uh, an open training for people. And I was saying, you know, our, our, our core value is fearless, right? But guys, you're in sales, right? Like, like no, nobody's putting you in a cage with a lion. Like, like you're not going on a battlefield. Nobody's shooting at you. Like there's no bodily, like you know, there's no chance of bodily harm. Right. So like to ask somebody to be fearless in a sales role, like, like the biggest thing you have to be afraid of is the word no. Right. Like, like going out there and being fearless, you can own that. You can be confident. You can come at it 120% because fearless is, is relative, right? Like, what do you, what, what could you possibly be afraid of? A Navy SEAL is literally dodging bullets, right? You have to be right. able to follow that and go into, into battle, right? We're talking about getting on the phone, right? So put that into perspective. Um, and I think that, you know, you hit the nail on the head. You got you to be really uncomfortable getting uncomfortable or comfortable getting uncomfortable. No, yeah, absolutely. So, Joe, your your mentorship has been invaluable, but now we're at that point in the podcast where we're going to ask you for one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? 
Yeah, I would just say, uh, you know, for me, uh, and this is probably not very self-serving, but I just I just listened to a really cool book and I listen to a lot of self-development stuff, um, but I, I don't listen to very much um, uh, of this type of book, but I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, Matthew McConaughey wrote a book called Green Lights um, and I listened to the audio this week and uh, actually it was last week, I'm lying, it was, it was a week before this, but uh, definitely worth getting, especially on Audible because he reads it and I just thought it was really interesting, man. It, 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 Talks about his story, but uh, it's got a lot of philosophy in it, and uh, you just wouldn't think an actor, uh, especially uh, a lot of the silly kind of roles that he's played over the last twenty years, um, would be that good of a writer. And so, uh, I think that's a good takeaway for this week. I think it's a very interesting listen, read, whatever you want to do, um, but uh, just a good book. Was there was there one part of his philosophy that stood out to you? Yeah. So uh, everyone knows it's famous, like first line in his first movie was all right, all right, all right. Right. And so he spends 20 minutes explaining how that entire thing happened. And it literally gives you chills. Like it, it's very, very cool um, to hear that story. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you the whole story because I'll ruin it for sure. you. But um, just listening to that piece to the audio makes the entire book worth it. But there's a lot of other cool stories inside the book. as well. All right. I'm going to download it today. Yeah, check Absolutely. it out. Absolutely. So Scott Todd, before you get to, we get to your tip of the week, I just want to remind the listeners that we have a sponsor this week. It's Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times. You know, it's all about getting your reps in and being comfortable, being uncomfortable. But Scott will help you through that transition. And after 16 weeks, you will start creating passive income without renters, rehabs, or rodents. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, have you ever been to a website and uh, this thing pops up and says, hey, uh, can I send you notifications? I, mean, I have. Okay. Well, check out this. This is easy for WordPress users if you have a WordPress website. Check out this free plugin called Through Push. It's free web push notifications for your website. Download it, put it in there, hit the easy button. Joe said there was no easy button in life. There it is. That's the easiest. <laughs> I can and uh, there you go. <coughs> prove, help me prove Joe wrong. Just kidding. I didn't mean to set you up there, Scott. Sorry about that. Appreciate it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, that that's a pretty good tip, but. This, this one will actually help you become wealthy. Um, learn more. Go to joeevangelisti.com. No one can spell evangelisti except for probably Joe. So I will have a link uh, to the site. But he's got uh, two podcasts, the Whole Scaling Podcast, the Legacy Blueprint, tons of information on there. And um, check it out, joeevangelisti.com. Joe, are we good? Yeah, man, we actually made it easier for people that want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. If they want to book a discovery call, we're, I'll offer some free discovery calls to your clients. Uh, they can actually go to elevatewithjoe.com, elevatewithjoe.com. That way you don't have to learn how to spell evangelisty, which is super difficult, I understand. And uh, I'll make it easier for, for, for folks to go to. So uh, if you want to book a discovery call and you want to talk about some one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, really it's a, it's, a, it's a good fit for real estate investors, for uh, doctors, chiropractors, executives, business owners. Um, if you're looking to take yourself from extraordinary uh, to outstanding, uh, we're here for you. We want to we want to see you guys level up. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. I want to thank the listeners. Just remind them the only way, the only way we're going to quality guests like a Joe Evangelisti is if you just three little favors. You got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review at support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. So please do it. All right. Um, one, two, three. Let Let's freedom free ring. <laughs> Joe's like, I had no idea you guys were going to I had no idea we are doing that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely.